And, uh, and the other thing I was in town doing was filming um, uh, Ted Young. He has a huge Elvis collection. I don't know if you know Ted. I think I know Ted. Yeah. Uh, and a fa fascinating uh, guy. And he actually went over the fence um, in 1972. Oh, wow. And got to meet Elvis. You know, oh, wow. they wow. called him. They called him <laughs> in the backyard, him and his accomplice. And El they, somebody went and told Elvis, and he came out and talked to him. So that will be an upcoming video, uh, him telling the story. Wow. And actually wow. has photographs, not of him and Elvis, but photographs behind the house as they're edging. They went over the back fence and, and photographed up to the house. Uh, I guess I can go ahead and tell people, I've never told anybody this publicly, but I also jumped over the fence. Now this was after Elvis's passing. I did in 88. Okay. Yeah. So, my, mine yeah. was 92. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. It was up the Dolan Street, Vernon, yeah. Vernon Presley's house. Yeah, you went through through his house. Yeah, yeah. and jumped over. Yeah, I jumped yeah. over at Gary Pepper's house next door to, yeah. to Vernon's and house. Yeah. yeah. What's your favorite Elvis song? Um, you know, I have a lot. Probably Trilogy yeah. would be one of my favorites. One yeah. of my favorites. Yeah. And you... The first thing you experienced for your first record was the Aloha. Piece. From Hawaii, yep. Yeah. Uh, I had a neighbor when I was a kid, and I'm sorry, I'm sure that thing's getting heavy. Yeah, okay. uh, when I was a kid, 12 years old, 13 years old, I had a neighbor that was a huge Elvis fan. And he was actually younger than me, and he had a cassette of Aloha from Hawaii, and I bought it for $1. Wow. And I still have the cassette, but I, I wore that cassette out. And it was during that, that would have been 77, you know. Um, but as soon as, after Elvis passed, you could buy records at the family dollar store. Camden came out. You could go in the local... Uh, Burning uh, Love and Hits from His Movies, Volume 2. Yeah, all yeah. that kind of stuff. You could yeah. buy magazines and the, all of the, the uh, uh, inquirers and all those things. So... As a kid, I loaded up on those things because I wanted to know. And that's the beauty of, of today. And, I'll, and I'll, I'll back up, and I hope I'm not taking too much time. But this all comes back to this. Uh, when I was a kid, and when everybody uh, was a kid, for a lot of us in this room, there was no internet. Basically, what you could learn was what you could read and what you could listen to on an album and read on the album cover. And that's it. Right. Mm -hmm. So right. What, what I'm doing is taking those stories that I read in those books and going and finding where they happened at and telling the story again to bring it back to life. And that's basically what I do. I love what you do. Keep doing it. And I recommend checking out this guy's videos on YouTube. If you're an Elvis fan, they're fascinating. And I appreciate you. You're in Nashville now? I'm in Nashville, Nashville? yes, sir. Okay. Thanks for stopping by. Oh, thank you for having me. Take care. Here's uh, Burning Love from the Aloha from Hawaii concert, 1973. <laughs> Is that not a naughty song or what? <laughs> <laughs> I got a face for the radio. Uh, I tell you what. Oh, that was oh, good. Man. Yeah. You folks missed it. Bradley was doing yeah. his imitation of Elvis. Can't help it. I can't help it. It felt good. good. I tell you what. Burn Love, the Aloha concert. Gosh, I can't believe that we've only got five more minutes left. It went quick. We're going to have to do this again, but maybe two hours. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, we need all these people to call in and uh, get on the tube and uh, see what they say and if they like the show. Yeah, this show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bradley so Reeves and an email. WDVX. Let them, let them call in or do whatever they got to do. Oh, please do. If they do that, we'll know, you know, people, they love this music. Yeah. And the guy that just left, he said, we don't get enough of it. Nobody plays it. That's we, true. we need to play it some more. Hey, by the way, do y'all know this? I bet you do. John's birthday is Tuesday. Isn't it? No. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. I'm sorry. What are you doing? Somebody. <laughs> wrong John. So, yeah. Yeah, wrong. Yeah. Look on your Facebook page. It says John's birthday is Tuesday. You'll be turning 68. <laughs> that is a compliment. Yeah, okay. Maybe I ought to go with that. <laughs> Before. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. You want to go through and do it again? Yeah. Uh, I want to play before we play your closing cut uh, piece. Um, I'd like to play uh, one more short track. This is Elvis Presley in Knoxville, 1972, recorded on a cassette player. This is a blue suede shoes. You were there. You were very lucky. Um, see, how many people in this room have actually seen Elvis live? One, two. Okay. Two. Nobody else. That's you never right. did. You didn't see him. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. Too young? Yeah, you're young. Yeah, well, I, uh, I'm 53, but my parents.
parents didn't, you know, we yeah. lived out in the country. <laughs> hey, you know, we didn't I, live do, in big city. <laughs> I do still have the red shirt with the high wing collar and oh. the covered cloth buttons that my dad wore to the concert that looked like an Elvis shirt. Wow. I do still have that. You she can wear it, and I can't. Yeah, well, I bet you look great. You kind of look like Elvis. Here's a uh, blue suede shoes from Knoxville, Tennessee, Stokely Center, 1972. I hope it's blue suede shoes. <laughs> Website and uh, the video is still there. Melissa, his daughter, and Greg. everybody introduce yourselves. Greg, his son in law. Greg? Erica, his granddaughter. Okay. And Justin, Erica's husband. Okay. And Billy Stalling, Spa Guy. Check out his videos. Absolutely. Uh, thank, thank you all very much for coming. Thank by. you for having thank us, you. Friendly. We Take appreciate care. it. Thank Great you. job. We'll do it again. Yeah. Bye. Sure. Okay. Bye. Bye. So I know that we were just on the radio together, So, but tell us your name. John Stansberry. John Stansberry. And John, you were at the concert in 1972? 1972, 1972 yes. 74. 74 and 77. Now, they had morning or afternoon and evening shows at some of those. At one of them they did. Okay. The, the first one in 72, I think it was just the evening show. Okay. And then they found out they had, a, uh, you know, more people. Right. That would show up, so they did another. Was that the 74 show? Yeah, I know, but they had an evening show, and I don't remember which one it was. Okay. But but it, I don't think it was a 77 because, you know, Elvis was getting in bad shape by that time. Right. He was sick, and you could tell it, so I don't think he did an evening show. But you snuck that camera in three different times. Oh, yeah. Yeah, all three times and got away with it, but... Uh, it, nobody else was doing it. I just figured somebody else would do it, and I, I thought maybe the the, radio, uh, the television stations would uh, try to, you know, get some footage. But I don't. I reckon they were so strict on it, they just, you know, they couldn't do it. So I just went ahead and snuck my camera in and shot it, and and it's it's not continuous, but it's in segments of just about all the songs he tried to sing. Cause it's only it's just 50 foot eight millimeter. So, so once you're out of that film, you, yeah, when you're out of the film, yeah, you got to change films and everything. And then I didn't want people seeing me try to change films, you know, but uh, we got enough footage. It was pretty good. But you were not doing it to bootleg. You were no, doing no, it for, no, no, no. For you. No, I was just doing it as home movies. That's, I was a big home movie buff because I learned something from my mother-in-law. She had a movie camera back when my first kids was born. Bye, y'all. See you. I'll be in okay. touch. When, yes, sir. Bye-bye. Whenever, whenever I saw what a movie camera could capture, I knew right then I wanted to buy one and use it, and that's what I did. My girls were very small. And but a lot of people didn't have cameras at that time. No, they that didn't was, have, that no. That was a very expensive venture. Right, it was. It was. I, we didn't get into any of that in there, but, uh, yeah, it was a... It, you had to kind of make good money, and, and I'm not bragging. I'm just saying you're right. A lot of people didn't even have a camera, and I and I'm glad that my mother-in-law was fortunate enough to show me what film was really about. And she had bought one back in the early '60s. So when I saw it, I had to have one. So I went out and bought some of the best cameras made. I knew that later on that they would have. I, you're holding a camera right now. It's it's a Sony and which is a good camera. But I knew that they would have microphones on these cameras. It just wasn't my time, you know. So we had to do the best we could. But I knew they were coming. And you're sitting there holding a camera that, my goodness, some of my old cameras, they were 10 times that big. Yes, so, sir. So, I, let me tell you also, yeah. oh, sure. <laughs> 
that when he, he videoed those, that any time we had company over, we had a holiday, friends would be over, I would have a slumber party, it didn't matter what it was, he would get out the projector, he'd get out the screen, and he would show those Elvis movies to everybody. And then he would turn on the turntable and try to line up the album with what he was singing on, on the film, and we just kind of had our own show about it. That but he, awesome. we did use them a lot. I mean, we watched them a lot. That is very cool. Yeah, so then by 74, I was waiting on trying to find a better camera, but it just wasn't gonna be. So I just, I snuck it in again and we captured what we could of that. And then by 1977, like I said, he was getting bad health. You could tell it, even on the films I've got, you could see that he was way overweight. But his fans didn't leave him, it didn't matter. And his voice never left him. He could still sing, even being as sick as he was. And of course, we know that he was sick in 77. That's when he died. So it was, uh, it was just a kind of a blessing that I got all that on film. Oh, it's, and, it's incredible. Because yeah. if you didn't, the visual part of it's lost forever. Right. And uh, Bradley had someone else that had the sound. Yeah. So now, yeah, I've got, visually, I've got the, you're able to put the sound with the... With I've the got that track, too. I've got that track. Okay. And for over 40 years, nobody really knew that I had those films. It just, like my daughter was telling you, it kind of got out a little bit. They knew somebody had the films, but they didn't know who. And I've got to give credit to Jake Mabe. He's a good friend of mine and Bradley's, and he found out I had them. He said, when can I come over and see him? I said, I don't, whenever you want to. And Jake said, how about tomorrow? I said, come on. So we got all the films out and started. He said, you know, Bradley Reeves, a good friend of mine, he said, he's got to see this. So we load up everything and we bring it up to where Bradley's doing his, over to museum. And he was just delighted to see it. And we've been friends ever since. That is awesome. So all of these uh, shows were packed out. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Sold out shows. Yeah, like I said, they were ten dollars. Even I, in '77, sold out. Yeah. And the reason I'm going but, there is, you have some people that want to pretend like Elvis was dried up, washed up. In oh no, 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 no. He he still packed out wherever he went, and like I said. I don't think he ever changed his venue of the money. I think it was always $10. And another thing we were talking about, me and my daughter, you know, he never changed clothes. He wore the same outfit when he came on and he was wearing the same thing when he went off. Mm -hmm. It may have been sweaty, but you know, these shows today, they change clothes 10 or 15 times, mm -hmm. but he didn't. He came out, he was a showman, he knew it, and he knew what he had to sell to people. And that's what he did. That's very cool. Well, they tried to make it affordable. I believe that they could have tripled that and they'd still filled the place up. Oh, or yeah. Or quadrupled even, probably, at that time. We felt like it was a bargain at $10. But now you've got to remember, in the 70s, there was a lot of people who wasn't making $100 a week. So there's a lot of people couldn't couldn't afford $10. Yeah, a house payment was probably $150 average. $100. Something like something that. Like I, that. I, I think mine was a little bit smaller than that. What did but, you spend, do you think, making that film, the camera and the film? Oh, the cameras were close to $600 at that time. And the That's films. Very expensive. Yeah, and the films were, uh, I'm, I'm going to say, 4 or $5 a piece, something mm -hmm. like that, maybe 6 But wow. that's. Uh, at the time, that was expensive. That's all I can say. But I was willing to go the expense of it because I knew what we were capturing on film. I, I just knew it. It's like some of, some of the people you see that's captured things here about the mountains and so forth. They knew the value of what they were doing, and I knew the value of what I was doing. Even though I didn't plan on ever selling them or doing anything with them, it's just nobody else was doing it. Nobody did it. So, so, do you know? I know he mentioned how to see these. Do you know how to do it? It's to uh, us, it's on. Go back and reference what he. You might might go back and reference him because I think it's on. 
WBLT Allen Williams, and I think you can find it on the internet by going to that. Elvis. Elvis in Knoxville. WBLT Allen Williams, Elvis in Knoxville, or something. Yeah. Okay. You'll get there with that if you just Google. If you that. just Google that, yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much, and they, that's well, a I'm, fascinating story, and I'm glad that I was able to meet you today and get yeah, this story. Yeah, same here. Uh, you're going to see some of the film clips that you've never seen. Because nobody really has, unless Bradley's bootlegged them. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So people that saw these concerts in Knoxville were able to go back and relive them. Yeah. Because you oh, I were had, able to get a camera. I had, I had one woman to call me up at home. She found out where I lived and everything. She called me up and talked to me for an hour and a half. And I said, the concert didn't last much longer than this. <laughs> and she was laughing, but she said, I'm just reliving every bit of it over. And that's what she was done. That's the beauty of it. And I had, I've had some men call me, too. In fact, I've got one man, he's a big Elvis fan. He wants me to come down and spend a day with him. I just hadn't got to it yet, but I'm going to go see him. Very cool. And, you know, we, for those $10, we had good seats. Oh, yeah. I mean, we weren't up high in the balcony. We weren't on the floor, but I, as a kid, wow. I had a great shot. I could, I, the way I remember it, we were almost dead center to him, and I could see him so good. So, you know, $10, I don't know what a really good ticket on the floor would have been, but those were good. Well, at that time, I can tell you this. Uh, I was in New York working, and I called my brother, and I said, uh, I'm thinking about going to Las Vegas to see Elvis in concert. And my brother said, well, why would you want to go out there for? He said, he's going to be in Knoxville. I said, go get me tickets. And he's the one that went and got the tickets. And that's when the kids weren't old enough to go then, but he got two for me and, and a couple of more. So that's how I come. I had that. And of course, I filmed it just, you know. But yeah, I was going to Las Vegas to try to see him, and that was a big expense. But that's just a good Elvis fan, I guess. Yes, sir. You spent a lot more money in Vegas. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm getting at. I, yeah. I, but when I found out he was going to be here, I told my brother, I said, go get the tickets. To get a good seat in Vegas, you had to, to grease the, the palm oh, of the yeah. maitre d' for about 100 bucks to get yeah, a good seat. Yeah. Yeah. Aren't we just glad that he wasn't a real follower? Because <laughs> he wouldn't have had his, his um, camera with him, you that's know, right. if he'd have been a real follower. And then we wouldn't have what we had. That's so. right. That's, that's stuff of legend right there, my friend. Yeah. That's is. awesome, man. I'm, I'm oh. proud of you for doing that. Well, I'm taking my camera and filmed a lot of stuff I wasn't supposed to film either. But you know what? It, it is what know, it is. Yeah, and, it is what and, it is. And years later, I've had people go, oh, man, I'm glad you got that. Right. So I'm not encouraging people to break the law. I'm right. just saying that if you get an inkling that you need to capture something, capture it. Like the trace. Well, what and, would we have done if people hadn't had their, their phones out for that, you know, and, and capture that? Well, when I've, they got, I've got movies building it. I worked on the World Trade Center. Oh, really? Yeah, long time ago. Very back good. in 69. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't encourage anybody to break the law either. I, but, you know, the main thing, I think, that kept people from even doing any of it was on the back of the ticket, it said a fine, didn't it, for any no motion pictures. They didn't say anything about flash, but any motion pictures. And, of course, any kind of a camera, that was, yeah. Mm -hmm. So they would have probably fined you, you know, mm -hmm. big time I'm back to take then. Film. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, they, they looked for the film on that last mm -hmm. deal, and it was in my youngest daughter's pocketbook. Which, you know, which they really let him go because if he had a camera, you know Clearly he had, had film. film. Yeah. But they didn't, because, you well, know, the crowd would come out a in a big crowd. They were pushing us through, and yes. they didn't have time uh, I mean, it was just like to, random. There was so many people, they couldn't just check every single well, you've like got, they do now in mm -hmm. airport. It was just a big. You got to remember, though, back in the 70s, they wasn't. You you wasn't allowed to stop somebody and start patting them down. Yeah. I mean, you'd have to have a warrant. You'd have to have somebody there. They just all they was trying to do is check to see that nobody was going to bootleg them. Right. And that's well, man, I thank you so it. much. It was nice to meet you. Right, today. Same to you. Yeah. Thank and you. I will. Uh, this will, of course, be on YouTube. Okay. And, uh, if you are good with that. Yeah. I'll do a story I don't, about no, you. I don't. I don't mind. And um, and friends. Go find that footage. Go take a look at the footage and check it out. Stuff of legends right here. <laughs> Thank you. Good talking <laughs> with you. Great to see you. Bye.